Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel today. I am back on Kerbal Space Program and I'm going to be doing a another sort of tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how to build a basic orbital rocket which will send a three person capsule into orbit around Kerbin and will then be able to be deorbited and retrieved from wherever it lands. So we're starting off by building the second stage of the rocket and uh, putting in some batteries which should hopefully power the first two stages uh, basically the two stages of the rocket those batteries will power that and then the command module for the mission will have its own set of battery systems so uh, building the first stage um, will be up next so uh, there is the decoupler now we're going to start putting on some fuel tanks building up the shape of the rocket putting uh, multiple fuel tanks on going to try and make it quite big it's going to have uh, hopefully six vector engines which are rather powerful rocket engines so we're going to need quite a bit of fuel for that um i'm going to be adding various size tanks just because this is sort of designed to be able to be easily transitioned into the role of reusable rocket so you will be able to with slight modification be able to land it uh, land the first stage back near the space center uh, similar to some other rockets that i have if you uh Look at my other KSP videos, you'll see I've got two videos on reusable rockets. The uh, most recent one, the first and second stage, are both reusable. Um, but for this rocket, it is going to be expendable. The only thing is, there is uh, it is easy, it'll be easy to modify into a reusable role by adding one or two more fuel tanks and uh, various things. It will already be fitted with air brakes and landing legs which will effectively make it a very easily convertible reusable rocket. So you need to do very little, just a tiny bit of extra fuel should do the job. Okay. So just adding these side bits, which will be the sections where the air brakes will be mounted. And then um, I'm going to put the gear legs down at the back. Just moving them in a bit for better aerodynamics. Okay. So now that they're in, we're just going to go down to the landing legs and put them on. That's too many. I want it to be four. Four landing legs. There we go. Got some gyros um, coming up soon. Because uh, we need the gyros first off for stability. And also for the um, for landing the rocket booster. You want to have a lot of stability for if you're landing it. If, if you do convert it to a usability mode. By adding the extra fuel. I'd advise just adding a single extra tank of... Uh, Sort of the medium size um, tank of this sort of fuselage size. Add one of them. Uh, lock it off so the fuel can't be used. And perhaps modify the engine so you can turn off four of them. So you land on two. And that should last for at least 30 seconds of burn time. So that should be pretty good. Okay. Um, so I'm just putting on some support beams at the moment. Just to make sure it's nice and strong. Uh, most likely is I'll do a test flight in this and I'll come back and make more changes. If I do do that, there will be clips after this build, first build clip of the modifications I make, just so you can do the same things if you want to build the rocket. Okay. So just make sure all the fuel's, uh, all the fuel's good and in the right places. In a second, we're going to go and start building the command module for the mission. Okay. Just uh, locking off that fuel. If it does turn out in test flight, I need that fuel. I will um, unlock it and just use that. So let's check on the capsule. It's going to be able to take three Kerbals in uh, one flight. Alright. So I'm going to put some gyros on now just for the stability. And then uh, we'll be able to move on to the uh, to the next section. So the plan is just to copy and paste the gyros over, just like that. Keep building them up until there's quite a few. I think that should probably do. So let's put some support beams on just so they don't wobble about. And then uh, that should do. There's quite a few there which should prove very useful for guidance. Because the thing is you want to be able to turn the rocket at higher speeds to change sort of the course of the rocket. Because if you just go straight up, when you turn the second stage to go push it into an orbit... The second stage will keep decelerating until the orbit starts to open up, which is a real waste of fuel. So if you go sort of diagonally with the first stage, you will have far more efficient fuel usage. 
which uh, currently with my reusable rockets I'm not actually doing because I'm trying to land the first stage back at the space center so if you go diagonally you have nowhere near enough fuel to do a boost back burn to push back to the space center so you'll have to land out near the mountains which isn't the best terrain for landing a uh, rocket booster. But um, anyway, so there is the gyros done. So next, I'm just going to um, angle it, uh, angle it correctly. Put on the crew. There we go. Just quickly do the uh, check. Everything's okay. All of it looks pretty good. So I'll angle it up. I'm going to do a quick test flight and see if there's any problems so far. And then if there is, I will, um, I will basically. Um, make some changes and make sure you guys know about the changes okay so one change I need to make is the fuel tank so the second stage doesn't seem to have quite enough fuel so I'm going to chuck some more fuel tanks in on the second stage just four of the standard small mark one fuselage size tanks which should give it enough fuel for an orbit and uh, also I am just going to move these engines in a bit to give the landing legs a bit more height off of the ground just uh, to make that a bit better right and also going to chuck on a docking port on the front of the capsule just in case it goes near any space stations and needs to dock okay it seems to be stuck on the floor at the moment there we go okay so there we go got a uh, docking port now and i'm also going to chuck on two solar panels near the front which will be used just to give the capsule energy once it's disconnected from the second stage all right well there we go so uh, i'm going to now go and do another test flight and see if there's any more problems that need fixing okay so it would appear that the rocket seems to wobble quite a bit so i'm going to add a long row of supports along the side of the rocket which should help with that problem quite a bit uh, if not uh, i don't really know what i will do but we'll have to wait and see see if it works so i'm just going to lower it down so that it's uh, more aerodynamic you don't want big bits of structure sticking out so there we go just going to lower them in and i'm also going to do some more beams near the back of the rocket there we go just lower them down Okay, so let's see if there's any more problems. Okay, so I'm just going to unlock this fuel just to give it a bit more altitude because uh, in the last test flight it didn't go high enough. So that should give it a lot more range. And I'm also now going to add some parachutes onto the Command Module 4 parachutes sort of behind the solar panels. Okay, so here we are. Let's go and get the launch going. So a slightly warped um, sped up just to make the video a bit shorter. So as you can see, I am turning not too quickly i'm doing small turns at a time don't want the rocket to lose control and there we go release of the first stage at about 1500 meters per second now the second stage will decelerate for a short amount of time before then accelerating again that's just while your orbit sort of arcs over a bit further and then you gain speed again so while that's happening we will be doing a slight deceleration and then we'll be accelerating again okay So the rocket is now accelerating yet again. Looks like the Kerbals are okay in the capsule. Almost there. There we go, we're in orbit. And we still have quite a bit of fuel left, which will be good for the deorbit burn. There we go, so we are going around now. Around Kerbin, I'll do one or two orbits, and then I will deorbit the capsule. And uh, try to get it lined up as close to the space center as possible. Um, I feel like I might come in a bit shallow for the uh, re-entry. Which might lead to me actually going uh, being a lot further from the space center than I want. But um, that can be something I can fix on later flights. If that does happen, all you really need to do, do the deorbit burn later on. I'm doing it basically across from the other side of the world to the KSC. I'd say if you... If I do have a shallow re-entry, what you want to do is just do a deorbit burn later, so that it's more of a um, more of a horizontal re-entry. Okay, so I'm going to do various burns now just to try and get it 
sort of aiming closer to the KSC. More, most likely, I will be landing near the continent on the opposite side of the ocean to the Space Centre, because the re-entry burn looks rather shallow, so the likelihood is that I'm going to be um, re-entering quite quite low down and uh, losing a lot of speed, but I'm still just going to practice with some orbital manoeuvres using the second stage. There we go, so it's pretty much aiming nearish the space centre. So let's do that. Alright. So we are descending, uh, not too quick yet, but that will probably accelerate quite soon, the re-entry rate. Soon I will be disconnecting from the second stage. It looks like it might still have fuel at the point I re-enter, which does mean this thing has definitely got quite a lot of fuel for manoeuvring, which could mean that if you're at a space station that's in a sort of medium curb in orbit and you are deciding to re-enter from there, you have a lot of time to do multiple manoeuvres, so that's quite good for this rocket. Also, it means you can, of course, make your orbit higher if you want to and still have enough fuel to re-enter. Just going to make a slight manoeuvre, though, of course, I probably won't end up near the KSC, but this is just a t early test flight of the rocket, so uh, just going to see how it goes, really. So let's just do a small burn. There we go. Very quick burn there, only a few metres per second to get rid of. Okay, so let's disconnect. There we go. We have disconnected from the second stage. Bye-bye, second stage. Now we're going to set the capsule into the sort of correct guidance for re-entry, you want to go in backwards so that the heat shield takes all the heat, you don't want to go in the other way because basically it'll burn up, so uh, those solar panels on the front, they are designed to uh, basically burn off on re-entry uh, it looks like we are already re-entering and we're quite far from the KSC, so probably gonna land quite far away so I can, uh, in future flights, that's something to look out for Okay, so we are re-entering now though, so we've been in a su successful orbit, and uh, we're now re-entering the atmosphere. Alright. So I'm guessing they'll snap off soon, those solar panels. There's one of them, one of them's just gone, and the other one's gone, there we go. Okay, we are getting pretty good deceleration, hopefully I won't land on the actual land of the continent, I want to land in the ocean for this first flight. There we go. I am currently four times warp, um, as well as a bit of warping of the video footage, so that's not exactly uh, real speed. It usually look a lot slower than this. Alright, so we're going to open the parachutes quite close to the water. Just going to double check that they're all on the correct... Um, just going to put two of them to a higher altitude, just so they can open as soon as possible. Not really necessary, but just to make sure. There we go, pretty close, but we've got a good, uh, good shoot. Speed that up. There we go. So everything is back down on the Earth. The rocket is expendable, but um, I'm sure if you want to, you can modify the design to be either reusable first stage or maybe even reusable first and second stage. Anyway, though, that was basically a how-to on making a orbital launch rocket. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. Maybe even subscribe to the channel. That would be absolutely brilliant. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.